my name's Amelia Woodward and I'm the Hospitality and Catering Technical Advisor here at City and Guilds. This short presentation is to support you with building the portfolio of evidence for the chef to party endpoint assessment. I'll explain what the portfolio of evidence needs to be. I'll go through the criteria which needs to be covered and suggest types of evidence which may cover the criteria. I'll also explain exactly which documents need to be uploaded with the actual portfolio of evidence. The portfolio of evidence is required to be uploaded as part of the gateway requirement. It needs to be 20 pieces of evidence which meet the specific criteria for the professional discussion. There must be evidence which cover all the criteria as well as meet the food group, group range and preparation and cooking methods required. These are listed in the table you can see on the right hand side of the page. Evidence must be provided for all of these. However, this evidence doesn't need to be in the form of a recipe log. It could be a witness testimony from the employer and or the occupationally competent tutor assessor stating what dishes have been produced and which ranges prep and cook methods have been met. Obviously recipe logs can also be included but think of dishes and multiple food groups and prep and cook methods to get the most out of each piece of evidence. You cannot include any learner reflection or self-evaluation within the portfolio. However, if the evidence needs to be explained, then this can absolutely be done. So now let's take a look at the actual criteria which need to be covered. Here are the first three knowledge, skills and behaviour groupings, industry and food trends, problem solving and teamwork. As you can see, I have listed the KSV criteria which need covering. And then within the evidence ideas column, I've suggested certain types of evidence which if completed adequately could meet the criteria. The last two of the knowledge, skills and behaviour groupings which need covering are promotion, business growth and customers and complex preparation, cooking and finishing techniques. Again, I've listed the KSB criteria which need to be covered and group these together where I feel similar evidence could be provided. Don't forget the best type of evidence is that which covers multiple knowledge, skills and behaviours. The recording forms document is compulsory and must be used for all learners. It can be found either in EPA Pro or on the City and Guilds website under EPA Resources for Chef de Party. We will not accept your own referencing sheets. I have highlighted on the slide in the list the documents which need to be uploaded with the 20 pieces of evidence. These are essentially declaration of authenticity for the portfolio then three referencing sheets, the evidence list, the KSB coverage and the food techniques reference form. We'll look at these in a little more detail next. And then I'll also talk about the witness testimony, which I haven't highlighted here. So the first of the compulsory documents is the declaration of authenticity. This must be completed by the apprentice, employer and the training provider and uploaded to EPA Pro with the portfolio of evidence. The next compulsory document is the evidence list. This is where you list all 20 pieces of evidence. I've completed three pieces of evidence just to give you an idea of how to complete it. You need to list all the knowledge, skills and behaviours being covered as well as the type of evidence. In the pieces of evidence which cover prep, cook and finish methods, you also need to list which ones are covered. This is shown in the example right at the top, reference 00. zero. Those prep, cook and finish methods are now all listed in the actual knowledge criteria. The third piece of compulsory evidence which needs uploading is the KSB coverage document. This page literally lists the KSBs required to be covered by the portfolio. Please provide evidence to meet all. We must have evidence for all criteria and I must stress this as it is laid out in the assessment plan. Dual coverage is not required 
except for the case statements which need the ranges to be met for food prep, cook and finish. On this slide, I've added in the prep, cook and finish methods of dough and batter products, which could be listed. Apprentices need three of these with six prep and five cook finish methods. So it may well be that more than one piece of evidence is required to meet them all. And finally, the last piece of compulsory evidence which needs uploading is the food techniques reference form. This referencing document is similar to the previous version of the standards and you need to ensure all the boxes are completed, essentially meeting the bracketed range. Again, I've filled an example in for dough and batter products and then I've listed the K criteria, which are the advanced preparation methods, the cooking methods and the finishing methods. So you can see where I've actually got those ranges from. The witness testimony form should be used for any witness statements the apprentice wishes to include in their portfolio of evidence. The witness can be the apprentice's employer representative, such as their line manager, or the apprentice's tutor. A separate form must be used for each witness statement. The witness testimony holds the criteria for all of the knowledge, skills and behaviours for the portfolio of evidence and professional discussion. The witness, whomever that may be, need only complete the sections they have observed. An actual example needs to be given though as to how and why the particular knowledge, skill or behaviour is met. So on the slide I've included an example of a dish being completed and cross reference to various sections. Obviously, a chef mentor could include many dishes and examples in one witness testimony, which could support the apprentice. Thank you for listening to this short presentation. If you need any further help, please do contact me on amelia.woodward at cityandguilds.com.